Many students in this QuickBooks class start off being afraid to do anything for fear of making a mistake and not being able to figure out how to fix it. It's easy to delete a transaction in QuickBooks, as I'll show you in this video. But more importantly, I'm going to show you how to use the built-in sample files in QuickBooks to use as a sandbox in which to play around and experiment. This will help you become familiar with QuickBooks. I'm going to go over a lot in this video, but remember that the main purpose of me showing this to you is to show you how to open a sample company and then experiment with it. Most of the things I'm showing you in this video will be covered more in depth later in the quarter. So don't think you need to memorize all this information at this time. This is just an overview of QuickBooks Desktop. The first step, once you open QuickBooks Desktop, is to close any company file that may be open. To do so, we're going to click on File, Close Company. QuickBooks is a complicated program, so sometimes it's slow to open or close files. Once it's closed, notice there is a Open a Sample File option. Click on the down arrow. I'm going to choose Sample Product-Based Business, but notice there are a lot of other options too. Now, if you get this notification that says Update Company, notice it says QuickBooks Desktop needs to update your company file. It's not updating QuickBooks, it's just going to update this file. So what's going on is I have a little bit newer version of QuickBooks 2018 than was used to open this file previously. So QuickBooks needs to update the file in order to open it. So I'm going to say yes, but if I said no, it would just close the window and I would not be able to open the file. And then it gives me this message that says, it's a, just a reminder, you're opening a QuickBooks Desktop sample file. It says, important, use this sample file to practice while you learn QuickBooks Desktop. Do not use it as your own company file. So rule number one, know what is your actual company and what is a practice file. It says, while you're using this file, QuickBooks Desktop will set today's date to 12-15-2022. Notice how these menu items were blanked out, were grayed out. That means QuickBooks was busy opening the file. Now what happens a lot of times is all these windows are open, are closed. Let me close these. So this is how these files will often open with a blank slate. Once the file is open, I recommend opening two windows and always keeping them open. The first one is the Open Windows List. To do that, we click on View, Open Windows List. And what's going to appear in here is a list of all of our open windows. So when we want to switch between windows, we can just go over here and toggle between windows. The next company is the home page. To get to that, we go to company, home page. And then I always maximize this. Now, if you've only had intro to accounting one, you may be wondering where the journal is for entering transactions. It can be found here. You go to company, make general journal entries. And then notice in my open windows list, I now have two windows open. If I want to go back to the home page, I would just click on home. If I want to go back to the make general journal entries window. I just single click on that. Notice we have the traditional account column right here. We use that to choose accounts. Now what this list is based on is based on our chart of accounts. 
Well, where's our chart of accounts? If you wanted to see the chart of accounts, there's a couple ways to see it. You go to lists, chart of accounts. You could do the control or the shortcut control and A, or you could go to company, chart of accounts. Again, the shortcut is control A. Or if you're on the home page, let me go back here to the home page. Over here is our chart of accounts. So I'm going to click on chart of accounts. And then here, as you can see, it's a pretty long list of chart of accounts. And if you're wondering what types of accounts these are, notice here's the, here's the account, and then here's the type of account. So these first three, checking savings and petty cash, are bank accounts. Then you got AR, and then we've got other current assets and some fixed assets. And then we've got some, we got AP, credit cards, liabilities. So in other words, the order of the accounts is going to be assets. And then we've got our liabilities. We have our equity accounts. And then we have our income accounts. Now, one thing that's different about QuickBooks that you need to get used to than what we learned in Intro to Accounting 1 is that income and revenue are the same thing. So in QuickBooks, you will never see anything referred to as a revenue account. Instead, they call them income accounts. So your job is to know that an income account is a revenue. So after equities, there's the revenues, also known as income, and then our expenses. And cost of goods sold is an expense too. Don't forget that. We will learn about cost of goods sold in Intro to Accounting 2. So in other words, if you're looking for expenses, notice the expenses are at the bottom of the list. So let me switch back to the Make General Journal Entries window. And so if we needed an expense, and you're not sure what the expense is called, and you're looking for an expense, don't look through here one at a time, because these are assets up here and liability. So if you're looking for an expense, just scroll down until you get to the expenses, and then you can find the expense. So let's say we wanted, let's see here. Legal fees. Let's choose legal fees. So that's how you would choose that. And then notice we've got our debit column and our traditional credit column and a place to enter the memos. Anyway, this Make General Journals Entries window, and you can see the name up here, Make General Journal Entries, won't be used a whole lot in QuickBooks. The reason why is QuickBooks is based on the special journal theory. If you don't know what a special journal is, it just means that QuickBooks has specialized windows or journals for entering certain transactions. Like there will be a window just for cash sales. There will be a window just for sales on account. There will be a windows for buying something on account. And then there will be a window for buying something with cash, which is just the right checks window, as we'll find out later. So these specialized windows are much faster than using this general journal window. So since we're not going to be using this general journal window a lot, I'm going to close it. So to close the window, you click on this little X up here. And I'm back to the chart of accounts. I don't want to look at the chart of accounts now. I can close that. And I'm back to our home page. Now let's say we wanted to know what this enter bills window does. Well, there's a couple ways to figure it out. You could point to it like I'm doing right now. Notice this says enter outstanding bills from vendors. So let's open that up and click on it. And also notice that enter bills window, there's an arrow that leads to pay bill. So once you enter a bill, Remember, these are outstanding bills. An outstanding bill means a bill that has not been paid. So if you're going to get a bill and you're going to pay it right away, don't enter it into this window because it's not, not outstanding. If you get a bill and you are going to pay it right away, you would go down here to write checks. Now, again, this will be explained to you later on in the chapter. But let's just go and open the enter bills window. And I'm going to enter a bill. Now notice I'm going to enter it on December 15. 
2022. And let's say I'm not sure exactly what the debits and credits will be, because notice there is no debit and credit columns on this window. So one way to find out exactly what's going on behind the window is I'm going to open up a journal report for just this day of 12, 15, 22. So to open up a um, journal report, I'm going to go to reports, accountant, and taxes. And then I'm going to open up journal. And I only wanted it for 12, 15, 22. So I'm going to go, notice this is highlighted. So I'm going to hit tab and go 12 slash 15 slash 22. And I'm going to tab again to the next field and then tab again. And then it refreshes. It's the same as hitting this refresh button. But notice there's a whole bunch of transactions. So what I want to do is I want to go back to my enter bills window and I want to choose a date. Let's make this 23. So the reason I'm choosing a date, I want to choose a date in the journal report where I don't see any other transactions except for the one I'm creating. So let me go back to the journal and change the date to 23. 12, 15, 2023, and there. Now the journal window, or this journal report, I should say, is blank. So there, in other words, there are no transactions on this date. So now if I go back to the enter bills window, and I just enter a transaction. Now remember, this is a sample file, as you can see up here. Sample rock castle construction. So whatever we do in here, it doesn't matter. It's just a sample. So if we screw things up, who cares? So let's say we get an elect we get a a bill from the electric. Apparently this is California Gas and Electric. And let's say the reference number is 123 and it's for $100. And notice down here it guessed QuickBooks guessed that it's an electric bill. And that sounds about right. So if this was not correct, we could change it. And notice once I entered the $100 here, it entered the $100 here because it guessed that they were both, both going to be the same. And now we're done. So now to save a transaction, there's a couple ways. If I want to leave this window open, I can just hit this save up here. And that's what I'm going to do. Save your changes. Notice it keeps the window open. If I wanted to save the transaction and close the window, I would click save and close. If I wanted to save this transaction, enter a new transaction in this window, I would click Save and New. But I've saved the window because I pressed up here on Save. Now let's go look at the journal. Notice over here in the journal it says Refresh Needed. So I'm going to click on that, and it automatically refresh. You can always click on Refresh up here to make sure. So let's look to see what happened with the debits and credits. So we're not quite sure what the accounts are because we can't see the full name. So we're going to click in between and drag them over. So it looks like gas and electric, which remember is an expense, it's debited for $100 and accounts payable is credited for $100. Now sometimes this is, for those of you used to the debit being shown first, which is what we learn in Intro to Accounting 1, this is kind of annoying. It does not, QuickBooks does not always put the debit first. That drives me up a wall. Anyway, so this is what's going on with that enter bills window. The enter bills window, remember, let's go back to the home page and see what it said. I'm going to point to enter bills and it says enter outstanding bills from vendors. So what this means is, if I have a bill that I'm not going to pay now, I use this window to pay it. And then notice later to pay it, I go to the pay bills window. Okay. Let's also, let's see what kind of effect this had on our income statement. So I'm going to pull up a report called profit and loss, which is the same as income statement, but QuickBooks calls it the profit and loss report, also called a P and L. So we go to reports, 
company and financial, profit and loss, standard. I don't want detail. I'm just going to go profit and loss, standard. And then I'm going to choose the date. Let me see what the date was back here. The date was 12 15 23. So reports, company and financial, profit and loss, standard. I want to change the both of the dates to 12 15 slash 23. 12, 15, slash 23. I tabbed over, or I could have hit refresh. Now, a lot of students will use these little calendar icons. That's slower. The keyboard is much faster. Use whichever one you like. So if you're wondering what type of an effect a transaction had on our financial statements, you can open up the financial statement, change it to that one date, and then let's see what's happening. So profit and loss means revenues. It's going to show revenues minus expenses. We don't have any revenues on this day, but we do have an expense called utilities, which is the main category, but it's gas and electric. So we have $100. So our net income is minus 100. So on that day, if that's our only transaction, we have a $100 loss. All right. So that's one way to find out when you're using a sample company what a window does. Just open up the window. Enter a fake transaction. Remember the date you use. Preferably use a date that's unique so that there's no other transactions. Open up the journal, and then you can see the results of that of the debits and credits. So you really know what's going on behind the scenes. Okay, let's go back to let's go back to the home page. And so notice we had enter bills. So let's go find out what pay bills means. Pay bills, it says, pay outstanding bills you have already entered into QuickBooks. So in other words, do not use pay bills unless you've entered the bill over here. And you only enter the bill if you're not going to pay it right away. If you're going to pay something right away, you just go down here and write a check. So let's use the pay bills window and look to see what's going on behind the scenes. So the way this works is... We're going to filter by vendor so we don't see all these other transactions. I do see the transaction that we want to pay, the one that we just entered. But let's just filter it out so that we only see California gas and electric. So there's two bills that are outstanding, in other words, that have not been paid. And we want to pay the one that we just entered. So we click here. And if it's a full amount, QuickBooks guesses the full amount here. If we wanted to do a partial payment, I could just type in a different number here. But we want to pay the whole thing. $100. And then down here to change the date of the date of the payment, I'm going to change it to, what was the year? 23. So let's say I paid it a month later on January 15th. 24. And I used a check. I don't want to print it. I want to sign a check number. And then I click on pay selected bills. Check number one. I just entered a one here. Or if I want to let QuickBooks assign the check number, I click here and then it will assign a check number for us, which would be a check number one higher than the last check number that was in QuickBooks. And it says payment summary, check number 517, which is what QuickBooks chose as the next one. And we paid $100 to California Gas and Electric. Do I want to pay more bills? No, I'm done. So let me go back to the journal. And now notice it does not show that new transaction. That's because this transaction or this journal report is only showing December 15th. I can now change it to include. January 15th. Hit refresh. And then here is our January 15th transaction that I just entered. And notice we've got the checking account. It's going down. And then AP is also going down. So what this pay bills or what that pay bills window did is it's going to lower AP automatically and it's going to lower whatever checking account we used. 
So let's say I made a mistake and this should have been a partial payment. So one way to check or to fix that transaction is I can just double click on this. Notice when I'm pointing at this transaction, sometimes it turns into an hourglass. So whenever it turns into an hourglass, that means I can examine it just by double clicking. So if I double click here, it'll open up and I can change the um, original transaction. So anytime there's an hourglass, I could go fix it. So let me double check this or double click this. So this was our check for $100, check number 517. Let's say I wanted to make it for $75. I'm going to go to click on a different field. And then I need to make sure that the amount paid down here matches. So I need to change this to 75 also. If I did not change that to a 75, and I try to save, and let's say I'm going to save it up here. It says, you use this check to pay some bills. If you change it, QuickBooks will also change how it applies the payment to the bills. Actions you can take. If you're, if you're making other changes and you're sure your changes are correct, click yes. Now here's a warning. This is really cool about QuickBooks. It says the total amount paid is not equal to the check amount. So what this means is the check amount, $75, has to match the amount paid. So I need to go down here and change this to 75. Now I can save it. Yes, I do want it to do that. And now I've changed that. So if I want to close the window, I can click this little X up here, or I can just click Save and Close, even though it's already saved. And then I go back to my journal, make sure it's refreshed, and there we've got, we've got a $100 bill that we entered in December, and then we've got a bill payment for $75. So that means we got $25 remaining. Now, how do we delete a transaction? Well, that's easy. We're just going to go back. Let's say we never paid it. We're going to go back in here. We're going to double click on the transaction and notice there's a delete button. You can either delete it, which means it gets rid of it, or avoid it, which means it gets rid of it from the accounts, but it leaves it in as a record. I'm going to delete the check. It warns you that if you don't know what you're doing, you need to be careful, but we know what we're doing. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to close this window. And now I go back to my journal, click Refresh, and that original transaction is still there. Let's say we do not want to do that. Say we want to delete that. I'm going to double click it, delete it. Are we sure we want to delete this transaction? Yes. Close the window by clicking in the upper right corner. And here's our journal. So I've backed out both of the transactions that I made. So that's how you delete transactions. That's how you enter transactions in those two windows. And this is how you can practice with QuickBooks to find out what's going on behind the scenes, debit wise and credit wise. If I go back to the home page. You can see that there's lots of other windows. So the nice thing about this home page, now remember the home page, I open, if I click, if I close the home page, if I want to open that home page, I just go to company home page. And notice it's blocked out in certain areas. So up here we've got vendors. So anything dealing with vendors, like our suppliers, those windows that we use to deal with them are up here. If we're selling something to a customer or getting paid from a customer, the window we're going to use is down here in the customers. So a lot of times people are using QuickBooks at first. They're not sure which of these windows to use. So there's two types of, there's two main types of sales for a customer. There's sales on account where they're going to promise to pay us later or you sell it for cash. 
So notice here, this one is called create invoices. I'm going to point to it. Notice it says bill your customers and receive the payment later. So we only use this window if the customer is going to pay us later. Do not use this window if the customer is going to pay cash. If the customer is going to pay cash, you use create sales receipts. And notice when I point to the create sales receipts, the little tooltip says bill your customer and receive the payment at the same time. All right, so now we know our five major windows. Enter bills. It's used to enter a bill that you're not going to pay right away. And then later, when we do pay that bill, we use the pay bills window. And notice it says pay outstanding bills you already entered in the QuickBooks. But what happens if we get a bill, like our phone bill, and we pay it right away? Well, you just go down here to write checks. Notice it says write a check for an expense that you have not entered as a bill in QuickBooks. So here's what some students do, which is wrong. They enter a bill here, which will increase AP, and then they go down here and write a check. By doing it this way, this write check does not get rid of the AP. So it's happened before where people in the real world Use this to enter bills all the time. AP keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then they go and write a check to pay it off, or they think they're paying it off. But that AP is just sitting there accumulating. So remember, if you enter a bill here to pay off that bill later, you have to use the pay bills window. And then the other two major windows are create invoices. We're going to bill our customer. They promise to pay us later. Or if we sell for cash, we use create sales receipt, which says bill your customer and receive the payment at the same time. And then later, we can take that money to the bank and record a deposit. So there you have it. That's kind of an overview of how to use a sample file to experiment with QuickBooks. So don't be afraid to get in here and play around. And even if you do make a mistake in your real um, company files, for the class, you always have the delete button. So remember the enter bills. Oh, well, here's another way to find a transaction that was previously entered. You can hit the back button. Here's the back button, previous button. So if you wanted to find a previously entered transaction and delete it, you just navigate to it. And then you click delete if that's what you want to do, or you could just change it. Okay, and I don't want to change this, so I'm just going to click the X button. And so feel free to use these sample companies to play around with uh, QuickBooks and to learn it better at a, at a greater depth. A really good way to do is once you enter a transaction, go to the journal and look to see what the debits and credits were so that's so you can tell exactly what's going on behind the scenes so good luck experimenting with quickbooks and i hope we have a good quarter